be and then do and you shall have. First, you must be the thing called happy or knowing or wise or compassionate or whatever. Then you start doing things from this place of beingness. And soon you discover that what you are doing winds up bringing you the things that you've always wanted to have. The way to set this creative process into motion is to look at what it is you want to have. Ask yourself what you would need to be if you had that. Then go straight into being. In life, you do not have to do anything. It is all a question of what you are being. The person who just knows that, if he could only have a little more time or a little more money or a little more love, he'd be truly happy. He does not get the connection between his not being very happy right now and his not having the time, money, or love he deserves. On the other hand, the person who is being happy seems to have time to do everything that's really important, all the money that's needed, and enough love to last a lifetime. He finds that he has everything he needs to be happy by being happy to begin with. So deciding ahead of time what you choose to be produces that in your experience. Happiness is a state of mind, and like all states of mind, it reproduces itself in physical form. All states of mind reproduce themselves. So act as if you are, and you will draw it to you. What you act as if you are, you become. But everything you do, do out of sincerity, or the benefit of the action is lost. Natural law requires the body, the mind, and the soul to be united in thought, united in word, and united in action. You cannot fool your mind. If you are insincere, your mind knows it, and that's that. So whatever you choose for yourself, give to another. If you choose to be happy, cause another to be happy. If you choose to be prosperous, cause another to prosper. If you choose to have more love in your life, cause another to have more love in theirs. Do this sincerely, not because you seek personal gain, but because you want the other person to have that, and all things you give away will come to you. The very act of giving something away causes you to experience that you have it. To give away. Since you cannot give to another something you do not now have, your mind must come to a new conclusion. A new thought about you is generated. Namely, that you have this, or you could not be giving it away. This new thought then becomes your experience. You start being that. And once you start being a thing, you've engaged the gears of the universe, the most powerful creation machine in existence, your divine self. Whatever you are being, you are creating. The circle is complete, and you will create more and more of that in your life. It will be made manifest in your physical experience. This is the greatest secret of life. So if you give to another as a contrivance, a manipulation meant to get something to come to you, your mind knows this. You've just given a signal that you do not now have this. And since the universe is nothing but a big copying machine, reproducing your thoughts in physical form, that will be your experience. That is. You will continue to experience not having it, no matter what you do. Furthermore, that will be the experience of the person to whom you're trying to give it. They will see that you are merely seeking to get something, that you really have nothing to offer, and your giving will be an empty gesture. The very thing you sought to attract, you will push away. Yet when you give to something to another with purity of heart, because you see that they want it, they need it, and should have it, then you will discover that you have it to give, and that is a grand discovery. All objective phenomena is drawn to you subconsciously. All events are created by you subconsciously. Every person, place, or thing in your life was drawn to you by you. It was self-created to provide you with the exact and perfect conditions, the perfect opportunity to experience what next you wish to experience. 
as you go about the business of evolving. Nothing can happen. I say to you, nothing can happen in your life which is not a precisely perfect opportunity for you to heal something. Create or experience something that you wish to heal. Create or experience in order to be who you really are. Who you really are is whomever you choose to be. Whatever aspect of divinity you wish to be, that's who you really are. But that can change at any given moment. Indeed, it often does, from moment to moment. Yet if you want your life to settle down, to stop bringing you such a wide variety of experiences, there's a way to do that. Simply stop changing your mind so often about who you really are and who you choose to be. Make your choice. Take your stand. Stand up. This is who I am. This is where I stand. This is why I stand. Make decisions with your soul. The choices of your spirit are always the highest choices. They don't need to be second guessed. They simply need to be followed and acted on. But it is not uncommon for your body to want one thing while your mind seeks another and your spirit desires yet a third. And when your choices conflict, your body, mind, and spirit are not acting as one. The process of creation works at all of these levels and it will produce mixed results. If, on the other hand, your being is in harmony and your choices are unified, astonishing things can occur. There are also levels within levels in your decision making. This is particularly true at the level of the mind. Your mind can and does make decisions and choices from one of at least three interior levels, logic, intuition, and emotion. And sometimes from all three of these. And within the level of emotion, there are five more levels, five natural emotions. They are grief, anger, envy, fear, and love. The five natural emotions include love and fear. Yet love and fear are the basis of all emotions. The other three are outgrowths of these two. Ultimately, all thoughts are sponsored by love or fear. This is the great polarity. This is the primal duality. Everything ultimately breaks down to one of these. All thoughts, all concepts, understandings, decisions, choices, and actions are based in one of these. And in the end, there is only one. Love. In truth, love is all there is. Even fear is an outgrowth of love, and when used effectively, expresses love in its highest form. Everything expresses love. Fear in its highest form becomes love. Similarly, moving up the scale of natural emotions, grief, anger, and envy are all some form of fear, which in turn is some form of love. One thing leads to another. Grief is a natural emotion. It's that part of you which allows you to say goodbye when you don't want to say goodbye, to express, to push out, to propel the sadness within you at the experience of any kind of loss. It could be the loss of a loved one or the loss of a contact lens. When you are allowed to express your grief, you get rid of it. Grief that is continually repressed becomes chronic depression, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of chronic depression. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Anger is a natural emotion. It is the tool you have which allows you to say no thank you. It does not have to be abusive and it never has to be damaging to another. Anger that is continually repressed becomes rage, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of rage. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Envy is a natural emotion. It is the emotion that makes a five-year-old wish to ride a bike the way his sister can. It makes you want to do it again, to try harder, to continue striving until you succeed. It is very healthy to be envious, very natural. Envy that is continually repressed becomes jealousy, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of jealousy. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Fear is a natural emotion. 
All babies are born with only two fears. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. All other fears are learned responses. The purpose of fear is to build in a bit of caution. And caution is a tool that helps the body keep alive. It is an outgrowth of love. The love of self. Fear that is continually repressed becomes panic. A very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of panic. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Love is a natural emotion. When it is allowed to be expressed and received normally and naturally, without limitation or condition, inhibition or embarrassment, it does not require anything more. For the joy of love expressed and received in this way is sufficient unto itself. Yet love which has been conditioned, limited, warped by rules and regulations, rituals and restrictions, controlled, manipulated and withheld, becomes unnatural. Love that is continually repressed becomes possessiveness, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of possessiveness. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. And so it is that the natural emotions, when repressed, produce unnatural reactions and responses. And most natural emotions are repressed by most people. Yet these are your friends. These are your gifts. These are your divine tools with which to craft your experience. You are given these tools at birth. They are there to help you negotiate life. The time has come for truth-telling, plain and simple. But truth is often uncomfortable. It is only comfortable for those who do not wish to ignore it. Then truth becomes not only comforting but inspiring. I would have you know about life, how it works, and why it works the way it works. In truth, you have imprisoned your holy self, and it is time to set yourself free. I tell you this. Heal the rift between you. End the illusion of separation and you shall be delivered back to the source of your inner strength. That is where you will find true power, the power to do anything, the power to be anything, the power to have anything. For the power to create is derived from the inner strength. That is produced through unity. Stop thinking of yourself as separate and all the true power that comes from the inner strength of unity is yours. As a worldwide society and as an individual part of the whole. Yet remember this. Power comes from inner strength. Inner strength does not come from power. Power without inner strength is an illusion. And inner strength without unity is a lie. For you think that inner strength comes from individuality and from separateness, and that is simply not so. Separation from God and from, from each other is the cause of all your dysfunction and suffering. Still, separation continues to masquerade as strength, and your politics, your economics, and even your religions have perpetuated the lie. Now I tell you this, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There is no separation, not from each other and not from God and not from anything that is. Act as if you were separate from nothing and no one and you will heal your world tomorrow. This is the greatest secret of all time. It is the answer for which man has searched for millennia. It is the solution for which he has worked, the revelation for which he has prayed. Act as if you are separate from nothing and you heal the world. Understand that it is power with, not power over. The purpose of your soul, its reason for coming to the body, is to be and express who you really are. The soul yearns to do this, yearns to know itself and its own experience. This yearning to know is life seeking to be. Your soul is the tool through which I express and experience myself. I tell you, I am in every flower, every rainbow, every star in the heavens, and everything in and on every planet rotating around every star. 
I am the whisper of the wind, the warmth of your sun, the incredible individuality and extraordinary perfection of every snowflake. I am the majesty and the soaring flight of eagles and the innocence of the doe in the field, the courage of the lions, the wisdom of the ancient ones. And I am not limited to the modes of expression seen on your planet alone. You do not know who I am, but only think you do. My beingness is in everything, everything. The allness is my expression. The wholeness is my nature. There is nothing that I am not and something I am not cannot be. My purpose in creating you, my blessed creatures, was so that I may have an experience of myself as the creator of my own experience. The one aspect of divinity that only a very special creature could create was the aspect of myself as the creator. I am not the God of your mythologies. I am the creator, that which creates. Yet I choose to know myself in my own experience. Just as I know my perfection of design through a snowflake, my awesome beauty through a rose, and so too do I know my creative power through you. To you, I have given the ability to consciously create your experience, which is the ability I have. Through you, I can know every aspect of me, the perfection of the snowflake, the awesome beauty of the rose, the courage of the lions, the majesty of the eagles, all resides in you. In you, I have placed all of these things and one more thing, than consciousness to be aware of it. Thus you have become self-conscious, and thus you have been given the greatest gift, for you have been aware of yourself, being yourself, which is exactly what I am. I am myself, aware of myself, being myself. You are that part of me which is awareness, experienced. And what you are experiencing is me, creating me. I am in the continual act of creating myself, and you are me choosing to be me. You are me choosing to be what I am and choosing what I am going to be.